Okay, hi again. My name is Dylan Black. Welcome to another edition of Daytime Ottawa, of course, on Rogers TV. Located on three acres on the Rideau, Glass Emotions inspires creativity. Let's find out more right now with the owner, the founder, the artist in studio at Glass Emotions. Crystal uh, Loke is with us. Nice to have you here. Thank you for asking me, Dylan. Well, okay, so you, this studio hasn't been around too long at this point. You're, no. just, you're just opened. Okay. Yeah, we did a bit of a preview uh, in October of last year yeah. and we're actually just going live this year with full-on workshops and classes coming in to the studio. Amazing. Mm. Uh, we're going to find out what Glass Emotions is all about <laughs> here in seconds. You have some beautiful stuff here. What is Glass Emotions? What do you deal with? So Glass Emotions is a studio that um, specifically works in the art of fusing glass. Mm. So it's not stained glass. You know, a lot of people relate it to stained glass where you have the leaded cane around glass and you put it in windows. Fused glass is more of still cutting glass, but mm -hmm. what you do is you actually melt it in a kiln. Uh, and I have two very large kilns. Mm -hmm. And then it actually, anywhere from 1300 degrees Fahrenheit up to 17, 1800 degrees Ooh. Fahrenheit, that any number of these pieces would be fired. I've got all kinds of questions here. <laughs> Number one, what exactly is a kiln? Is, is that like a big drum? Or a big what? oven. Big, big oven? Big, huge oven. It's about, the one I have is about 25 inches by 41 inches by about 18 inches deep. Okay. So I could put a person in it, but... Okay, let's not, <laughs> let's not go in that direction with this yeah. interview. Uh, so what is exactly uh, you're fusing? That's what it's called. Right. It's called fusing mostly because what you're doing is you're taking glass, raw glass that you, you purchase, and there are very specific uh, components of glass that you have to use compatible glass um, together in order for it to remain stable mm -hmm. in the kiln. Um, you cut the glass into pieces. For instance, something like this, I would have cut into probably about 50 individual pieces in this small piece, laid them out together, and then uh, fused them together mm -hmm. in the kiln. Okay, so so how long this piece we're looking at right here, how long would that take? I know you've got different pieces here to sort of... Right. But, but how long does it take to make this whole process happen? So, I mean, from cutting the glass to actually getting a finished piece that I would either... For instance, this is a backsplash that's going to go in on a bathroom wall. Mm -hmm. um, to actually installation of that. Um, cutting the glass is the easiest part and most yeah. fun part for me. Um, Maybe a couple hours, yeah. couple three hours. A couple hours to you, maybe. Mm -hmm. Is it dangerous? Because you're you're talking about some pretty uh, high temperatures mm -hmm. there. I, I mean, you have a respect for the kiln. Um, mm -hmm. I cut a lot of glass. I have a lot of cuts on my fingers constantly. I bet. Go through a lot of band aids. Yeah. <laughs> where, where do you get the glass? Because you said specific glass is what you use. Right. So there's a couple in the industry. Um, actually, I'm just getting into one. It's called float glass, which is basically window glass that mm -hmm. we're going to start using with a different instructor in the studio. There are two other what they call COEs, mm -hmm. uh, coefficient of expansion. Mm -hmm. So there's one called 90 COE and one called 96 COE. I purchase most of my glass from a company in the U.S. because there are no manufacturers of this glass mm -hmm. in Canada right now, maybe yeah. in the future. Um, and it actually is manufactured and then shipped to me here in Ottawa. Okay. Can we talk about your philosophy? Because you have a, a special philosophy when it comes to your studio. Yeah. So I, when I actually started this business up, I really wanted to demystify and debunk um, because when I first started in it, it was all like, oh my gosh, everything was secret. There was, you know, how do we do this? How do we fuse? How do we, how do we melt glass? How do you cut it? All of those things. And I wanted to be able to give an environment to people that I would actually give them all the tips that I didn't get when I was learning. Okay. Um, so that's one of the reasons why you've opened up these workshops as well. That's right. So my big focus here in Canada, when I started, there was an absolutely no instructors mm -hmm. in Canada, Canadian, who taught in studios that you could go and learn. Hmm. Um, there were a couple studios, uh, both here in Ottawa as well as some of the other cities, uh, where some instructors came up uh, and taught, but mm -hmm. it took me a long time to find those. So what I wanted to do was reach out to some of these very what I call master glass artists who have very specific techniques mm -hmm. and bring them to Ottawa so that A, Canadians wouldn't have to pay the expense of going to the U.S. Yeah. and the U.S. dollar 
um, as well as giving opportunity to learn something really exciting, not just, oh my gosh, I cut a piece of glass and I fused it into a, a little plate. Okay. Let's talk about some of these specific items that you have here on the table. I mean, uh, let's just yeah. pick up maybe a couple and, and tell me exactly. So when, uh, one artist who is here who I absolutely loved coming, her name is Lois Mano. Um, she's actually from, um, <laughs> and I'm drawing a blank, she's from New Mexico. Um, and these are actually feathers that are made from glass powder. Uh -huh. um, and we make them in the kiln. She guides us through how to actually make these. So this is actually a blue jay feather. Oh, yeah. And you can see, but it, they're, they're more like a porcelain-like like feel. Yeah. Um, but Lois is fantastic. She actually developed a product that I'm selling Okay. Um, that's very unique to the glass industry. Okay, one more item that you'd like to talk about? So these three actually, uh, um, my last instructor, he's from Singapore, mm -hmm. uh, his name is Peter Kane. Uh, Peter's am amazing, he's an Australian who lives in Singapore that came here to Ottawa. Mm -hmm. So he teaches what we call crazy dropouts. So dropouts means I elevate the glass uh, in a kiln and then I actually drop it out so you have this kind of effect. This wow. is actually on a slant um, that we drop it out. So that's why we called it crazy drop that out. Is something. Okay, workshops, not very big, uh, like there's not many people in a workshop, so there's lots of one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, so our max is 12, and that would be a big class. Uh, we are we have three sessions we're running in August, and all three are filled with 12, but we're bringing in a woman from South Africa, mm -hmm. Marguerite Benneke, who is an amazing artist and uh, we'll have those workshops full. Okay, glassemotions.ca for more details. And of course, uh, people are gonna have a look at more of your products. And I know yeah. that you love the, the tartans. <laughs> uh, wow, this is beautiful stuff. Yeah. And can I say, Crystal, that nothing was broke during the, this segment, yeah. which is always a positive one Careful. I'm involved. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, <laughs> Good job Thanks. and more daytime coming up on Rogers TV.